Roll it. Oh, yeah. Two pre-rolls back in the mix with Tacovas. If cowboy boots are on the holiday wish list, give the gift of Tacovas. Their Western boots for men and women are handcrafted from premium bovine and exotic hides in a variety of timeless and fashion-forward styles that I'll have everyone on your list saying, yeehaw. Start off. Gifting season on the right foot with at Tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S dot com. Don't go gently, y'all. We're a couple of Cowboys Boots Boys, by the way. We'll talk about it later in the show. Also want to thank our sponsor, AG1. When I started drinking AG1 daily, my gut health started improving right away. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and 5 free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash jrvp. That's drinkag1.com slash jrvp. Check it out. Uh, I was out of practice, but I nailed that. If you like having pre-rolls back in your life, your mind will be blown by the takes on uh, Matt Reif, uh, a fight club for kids, and uh, email corner. All coming up in episode 225 of the Jessen Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Freedom works both ways. We're back, and Anthony says he's going to try to be a good boy this episode. I'm going to do my best. Uh, listen, we do, we're, we're taping two back-to-back. -back. This is the first of two. I've been gone for a month. I've been on the road living out of a suitcase. It was a lot. And toward the end, I was over it. And I landed, gotten back to LA, and been very excited to be home for two and a half days before I <laughs> leave tomorrow to go to Portland. Uh, and the last thing I want to be doing is this. But I put on my big boy pants, and I got my haircut today, and I'm coming in to do my best. It, the next three weeks, are uh, are really tough once the next three weeks are over my life gets much much easier and then the next year is easier but these next three weeks are are my waterloo if you want to bring napoleon <laughs> into it and and it's not just like what i have going on the next three weeks it's that it's when these three weeks are coming in my year it's it's everything is it's been a lot i've been good and now the wheels are coming off a little bit and I got this, this three weeks to get through. But I'm here. Aren't you just happy to see me, though? It is nice to see you. Nice to see Aaron. Thank you. I, I came in before Greg today, and I was like, Aaron, how was your Thanksgiving? And then walked away to go to the bathroom before we ever like, <laughs> finished. I was like, I don't know why. You look like a completely nice different person. This keeps happening when I see you. Like, um, your beard is almost totally gone for the... I mean, you got some stubble, but more yeah, more so than any time in the last few years. It's true. Uh, your hair is long in the back. You kind of look like a hockey player. Yeah, I look like Kenny Pickett. Um, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I've got a thing. I've got a film two weeks from now. I went to get my hair cut. And a lot of times my hair is short on this because I'm only home for two days. And one of those days has to be haircut day. And so I've got a... I, I trimmed it short so that two weeks from now it will be a little fuller and it will be what I want it to be. That's we, we play the long game when I get my hair cut. We're thinking in advance. What's my two-week we. plan? Me and Shin, my girl. Um, so yeah, so don't, don't think you're not going to see the beard anymore. This is just, this is just the prepping. This so, is the some, somehow I know, and this is through my dad, my, you know, my dad, my mom, they say hi. They'll see you soon mm -hmm. at the Boston show. Yes. It's very nice. You offered to go out to dinner afterwards they were they were mm -hmm. touched by that so yeah. they're, they're looking forward to that uh but he had mentioned actually your somehow your haircut activities got brought up on mark maron's podcast which he did a long story about maron's been talking about the haircuts a lot <laughs> uh maron went to my haircut lady asked me who, who who should cut his hair knowing i have the best hair in the business and i did not steer him wrong and uh, we uh, got our haircuts together one day. We were just like sitting there, uh, like looking, looking in the mirror laughing. He was like, yeah, maybe I should uh, live stream this right now and sit, watch us lose all our fans. But it was, uh, it was fun. <laughs> she was too expensive for me. Yeah, you can't, not everyone can handle it. I didn't need it. Mark could barely handle it. I was like, just fucking do it. Just, just do it. I, like the, I don't know if I ever talked about this in the podcast, but Mark and I are sitting there. He's, getting, he's finishing his haircut when I come in for mine. And then she does mine while he's like you know, getting shampooed or whatever. And she's talking to us about how to style our hair. So he's like, what do I do with this now? 
you know, and I'm like, oh, I got longer hair. I'm like, what do I do with this? And she's like, all right, guys. She's like, let me tell you what to do. <laughs> and we're like, okay, we'll listen to whatever you say. You obviously know what you're doing. She's like, you got to stop washing your hair so much. She's like, wash your hair less. Wash it like once a week, twice a week. And the other times you go in the shower, she's like, don't even get it wet. Water, like it, it, like, it, it like drops your hair. You want it to be, you want volume in there. So like, just take a shower without wetting your hair like women do. And Mark and I are like, okay. We're like, okay, yeah, just wash our hair less. Okay, we can do, okay, great. Got it. This is life changing. And then she's like, and then you got to blow dry. And we go, fuck you. We both go, fuck you. I'd rather shave my head right now than ever blow dry my hair, ever. And she threw her hands up and, and, uh, and left the room. And we laughed. Because we're guys. We're guys with great haircuts who are at the top of our games comedically. Um, I haven't washed my hair in like three days, too. I've been following that, that MO. But you can't, you can't put product in it then. You can't like put product in it and then leave it unwashed. You can't. You, just put, you, put le- you have to really? put less product in because it's water. And then when you wash it, once a week or twice a week, you wash it twice. Two shampoo runs, then conditioner, what? and then you can do it. But yeah, I, I still you can't do. Play softball I still times a week. do a couple no. times a week here. It's hard if you work out. But if people check out the the YouTube show, I mean, it's looking good right now. If you got short hair, you can wash it as much as you want. You can get it wet all the time. When it gets longer, you want that volume, guys. This is one hundred and one. I shouldn't have to be coming in here, explaining to everyone how volume works. You want lustrous, voluminous hair with shine. Voluminous. Voluminous with shine. Did you think, um, you know, after you hadn't seen me for a month here, we would just come right back in at the Justin Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project? JRVP. Junior Vice President. Just break right into hair, uh, hair care 101. I mean, I'm always waiting to teach you a lesson about hair care 101. I am the master, Aaron. If you woke up in the morning with a question about your hair, uh-huh. <laughs> who do you come to, me or Greg? Oh, it, uh, by far, it's you. It's me. <laughs> okay. Do you have a question you'd ever ask Bill Burr about his hair? <laughs> Absolutely not. It, absolutely not. You would never do that, even though you could between the hours of 11 and 4, five days a week. Yeah. You could just walk in there. <laughs> yeah. But you're like, uh, why? Yeah, yeah. Why? Why waste my time yeah. talking to Bill Burr? By the way, my dad say thinks Aaron, you're very funny, Aaron. Aaron, say I would not waste my time. <laughs> I won't say that. Okay. <laughs> he, he thinks you're very funny, Aaron, and he asked me, he's like, do they work on, you know, they've got a nice thing going back and forth, Aaron and, and Anthony, him, him always kind of, you know, green and stuff. He's like, do they work in that ahead of time? I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, they have beats. They have <laughs> meetings throughout the week. Fully script. <laughs> yeah, Aaron and I were on the phone for hours last night <laughs> coming up with that he one. S- <laughs> said, said you have great timing, though, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks to Tom. Big listener. Big fan. Aaron, you blew, you blew the joke. Tom, also my dad's name. So Greg. Here we go. Greg, tell me I have great time. You have great time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Thanksgiving with the family? It was really nice. They, they were here for a week. Um, I had lost my voice, actually, for two or three days right before they came here. I think I was doing too many, too many shows, too many podcasts. I don't know. Too much, too much whatever. Uh, so that was that was troubling. I had trouble sleeping and all that. But they got here. I'm definitely appreciating. I, I feel like you're like this too now. My parents are even a little older. Like you don't know how many times they're going to be able to come come out here. So uh, enjoy it. And we did. We went to a friend, uh, like my Ellis and Walker's friend's parents' house, where we didn't even have to cook. And it was like on a ranch. Walker dr- got to drive like a little tractor. There was cows there. There was. It was really America. It's like the Pilgrims did it. That sounds great. <laughs> I, uh, I was home in Pittsburgh. I uh, flew in from, uh, from Tampa. Uh, just, and again, I, I'm going to talk about I was gone for a month. Next week's episode, which I'll be recording in hopefully 25 minutes, <laughs> uh, is um, I'll talk about New York and the rest of the festival. New York was a great, a great week, one of the best weeks of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Pittsburgh was great, too. I uh, flew in from, uh, from Tampa to Pittsburgh Tuesday night got to see the whole family and then Wednesday I did one of the most baller things I've ever done and I got a luxury box for the Penguins game and had my whole family come and like family family friends my sister's getting married next year so some of their family came and it was like the best thing I've ever done Penguins lost one nothing, but it was a great game uh, edge of our seats the whole time uh, Crosby almost scored one at the end to, to, uh, to take us into overtime which would have been insane but it was the best experience I've ever had with my family 
at a, a sports game. It was so great to be in that box. I feel like you've done that before. Why was it any different? I did. I once did a box for my dad's birthday when he turned 70. He threw out the first pitch, but that was like 40 people. It was so many people. This was like a family. This was like 15 family members hanging out watching the game. So it was like you weren't just running around like glad handing. You could actually watch the game and kind of bond with people. Everyone had a blast. Thank you, Penguins. Thank you, family. It was so much fun. And you and paid. Then, you paid the whole freight. Yes. I'm just curious about the dynamics. Paid of these the whole things. freight. Paid mm -hmm. the because uh, I was like I, w I was going to buy tickets for people, and then the ticket the number of tickets starts getting up there, and I'm like oh this is expensive, and then I'm like well to get my parents to come to a hockey game I got to get the box. They don't they don't enjoy it as much. My mom had never been to a game before, so I'm like if I get the box then it's not that much more expensive than getting like 20 tickets, and uh, and it got my parents there, but everyone loved it. I'm going to make this a family tradition. I will do. I will go every time I'm home. There's a Penguins game. I will get a box and take my family. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can't recreate the excitement of a one nothing hockey loss anywhere else. It was great. Listen, I had no complaints. The only thing that would have made it better is if Crosby buried that goal at the end. But even then, it was still so fun that it did not matter that we lost. I loved it. Everyone loved it. Liz was there. Liz was there. Uh, Liz loved it. And then, uh, then what, Thursday Thanksgiving. It was a great day. My brother took off, unfortunately, but, uh, but thanks for being fun with the family. And again, you do appreciate more. You know, I, I'm, we all have friends whose parents are either no longer with us or uh, kind of towards the end. And so it made me appreciate that time with them even more. And then the show, of course, in Pittsburgh Saturday night was incredible. Uh, really fun, amazing show at this, uh, the Benedum Theater, which I'd never performed at before. Uh, but that was where, like, where I would go as a kid to go see like cats and like uh, fucking Starlight Express. So it was cool to be on that stage. And then my parents had an after party afterwards that was my least favorite post-show activity I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> it, was, it was going to this uh, hotel lobby that my parents had like not rented out, but just like had the bar kind of like a situation for just people that they could bring. And so I'm taking pictures with people who were surprised to see me who had seen the show and then went back to their hotel and saw me in the lobby standing for photos. And so I did a lot of that. And then my parents took me around and I met all of our neighbors. And not our neighbors, their neighbors. Yeah. People I'm meeting for the first time who are my parents' neighbors. And I met them all for maybe, maybe two hours, walked around shaking hands. And only my, my childhood dentist pulled me aside and was like, Anthony, you're a good man. I go, what, what? And he goes, looks around and goes, you're a good man. You're doing this for your parents. And yes, it was all for my parents, 100%. Saw a couple of people from high school mm. and then bounced and then flew home as soon as I could. It was a great time, but I'm glad it's just once a tour. There's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a lot. Are they going to do that every time? Every time I'm in Pittsburgh, probably. And again, if I had been, I kept saying this in the second half of my trip, and then like the whole, all the Florida shows... The Pittsburgh show, if I had just been flying from L.A. to do those, it would have been very easy. But coming at the end of like in the middle of this long stretch, it was a little tougher than it would have been. And by the end, my name, like, you know, uh, friends are like, how is everything going? And I'm like, I'm so tired. I just need to get back to L.A. and see my dog. And they were like, oh, but that's where I was at that moment. But still a great, a great experience uh, performing at the Benedum. And again, I'll tell you more about Carnegie Hall and all that stuff uh, next week. Your parents look great in the pictures, you yeah. know, uh, on IG. And they were stunting on all their neighbors showing you off they were thriving they're like we're better they were thriving we're better parents because our son is is a bigger star the biggest some might say um but yeah again the next three weeks uh lots to do not just shows but other another project that i have coming up in a couple of weeks that maybe i'll talk about at some point i don't really want to and then i'm i'm done so we'll see this week's episode is going to be great i'm going to be positive and not mad at all and then the next episode we'll see and then two weeks from now, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how we're going to tape it. I've got so much shit going on. And then after that, I'm going to give you so many episodes. You're going to shit out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking very like Billy Crystal um, in When Harry Met Sally, the knit, like, the knit sweater. I like these today. sweaters. I found a sweater store in New York that I, that I bought uh, several of these sweaters and then different ones. Did you get any pop uh, in Pittsburgh? You used to say how they didn't give a shit about you there or no one really realized you were from pittsburgh it wasn't any different than any other show you maybe didn't get the hometown love they won't give you the little pictures at uh Primanti brothers or mm -hmm. whatever that was yeah uh has that changed was no. it any different 
A little bit. I, I think I have my pocket of Pittsburgh people who know I'm from there. But uh, and whenever I mentioned Upper St. Clair, there were little pops of uh, of love there, but not really. I'm not like unless I unless I go full Billy Gardell and start eating the Aaron diet <laughs> and start like just like you know talking about football all the time, even when it's not football season, then maybe they would love me. But it was it was great. My old principal from high school came to the show, and I got to meet him afterwards. And I was uh, that it was great to hear people like that say how proud they are of you. It's it's always nice. So it was a great uh, great trip home, great part of the tour. You're not gonna pass Joe Manganiello or whatever as Mr. Pittsburgh. I mean, he's just living on those uh, Steelers sidelines. You, w- you wait five years, and then we'll see who who's uh, who's waiting on the sidelines. Steelers killing it, killing it, so good. What did I tell you? I said at some point they're just lucking around with all these wins. At some point, because it's Tomlin, they'll actually turn into a good team. And I know you're, you're not into the uh, the advanced metrics too much, but this site I go, I, I use, mm-hmm. DVOA, they the, is there the, over since week six they have the Steelers as the fifth best team in the league. They actually they are turning into a, a good team. I can't argue. I'm glad they got Canada out of there. The bowling was a lot. I was against it, but he had to go. Better now than, than never. Team was going to revolt. And again, listen, you can't argue with results. We put up 16 points <laughs> this week. Okay? We get results. Kenny Pickett is the guy. <laughs> and now it's time for Did We Get Any Notes? Did We Get Any Notes? Yeah, we got some notes. Uh, we got a funny note uh, while I was gone. Uh, we had pre-taped some episodes, and there was one where I came in real hot. I think it was the last one we taped of the week where I was not happy to be there. Less happy than I am right now, if you can't believe it. And I acted out. I was ornery, and it was fun. I remembered it kind of being fun. And then we saw notes. Aaron? I'm on Do Not Disturb. I don't know how that came through. From Heart Shaped Guys? No, it's my wife. And what? Heart, <coughs> Leah, heart shaped eyes, our last name. Wait, she wait. Put the, let's, she put that in my phone. Wait, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's circle back. I got some notes on this. How did how does that work? She put an emoji between her first and last name in my phone. Okay, so but then when up. the call comes in, it's like an audio. Like you've got a call from our heart shaped eyes. Is that what it, what was going on? That's what it did because it's plugged in. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, like, couldn't that happen in your in any s- setting though? That 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 would happen, and you're not afraid of that. I'm usually on just on vibrate, so okay. I'm not really worried about. It. I mean, it's what, beautiful. What, hey, Aaron, what shape are my eyes? <laughs> oh, I mean, for sure, heart shaped. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah. Anyone, we saw notes that people were <laughs> listening to the episode and it made people upset. Some people said they couldn't finish it because uh, they thought that we were hearing us get in a fight. We thought that we were ending the podcast, that we were breaking up. (laughs) And I sent them to Greg. I sent a few of them, like, look at this. And Greg did not know what anyone was talking about. That was a normal interaction between me and Greg. Again, when you've been friends for 25 years or whatever, shit like that is water off a duck's uh, bill. Not even the back where there's some sort of resistance. I'm talking bill. It's right off. One drop on, one drop off. That's Greg and mine's friendship. A duck's face. Well, just in general, a lot of my friendships or whatever growing up, it's, it's, uh, it's always a little back and forth. I remember, I knew it was different than a normal episode, that you were very ornery. And I didn't, I, I thought people would enjoy it, even if I was, you know, if it was a little awkward or whatever. I thought, oh, this is, this is kind of fun. Yeah, but I've come over to your house, like, f- with the express purpose of visiting your children, and I've been pissed when I walked in. And everyone just said, kind of deals with it. Like, it's nice that Anthony came. He's a little mad, but he's being fun. So that's what this podcast is. A little mad, but being fun. Well, one, one, yeah, one comment. You did send him to me, because I, I stay away from the board. I just think... Uh, in general, but it'd probably be fine for JRVP, but for, for my other podcast, it's just better to just avoid all this stuff. Uh, yeah, one person said they've been in such a bad place lately, uh, they couldn't get past you getting worked up. Like, they just, they, they couldn't cope. That it, it sounded like a, a, bake, a breakup 
and uh, we were dangerously close to Aaron refusing to yes and Anthony's insanity. Today. Yeah, Aaron, were we were we dangerously close to you refusing to yes and my insanity? I don't even recall. Was this during yeah. the mailbag? No, it was the, it was the one because we did one and then a mailbag that same day, and <laughs> yeah. then it came in Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so mad to be here on a Thursday, but and no one. No one even raised their eyebrows at my behavior. No. Or me, like, wow, Anthony, it's just like, oh, this is going to be one of these. That's what everyone thought. Yeah. So, I mean, it, when you're friends with Anthony, you get used to this. There was there was one time, I think it was Ellis's birthday, actually, and we all went out for pancakes, and he just was like yelling at her the whole time, like mm-hmm. throwing pancakes mm-hmm. in her face. I, it was, that's not enough pancakes. <laughs> and then I switched over to that's too many pancakes. <laughs> and everyone was mad. <laughs> Happy birthday, Alice. <laughs> I've got another note to cheer everybody up, to, cheer, to, to let you know that we're back on, uh, back on solid ground. I've got a new contest for the listeners Whoa. that I'm going to debut tonight. And I've got an announcement. Uh, I've got vinyl. Uh, you could buy vinyl for Fire in the Maternity Ward. It's very rare. They didn't print a lot of them, but they're, it's out there somewhere. Uh, and then we're putting out Shakespeare, Caligula, and Thoughts and Prayers on vinyl to go along with it. They are, they are uh, debuting. I think you can find them in stores or wherever the fuck they're sold on the internet uh, in December, in like a couple days from now. I don't know exactly when. I want to say December 1st. I don't know if that's true. It might be next week. Anyway, I've got some. They sent them to me. Here's what I want. I'm going to give out five, five bundles of albums. You will get Shakespeare. You will get Caligula. You will get Thoughts and Prayers, unreleased, that just got, came out today. And you will get a very rare edition of Fire in the Maternity Ward. I will give you, you all, sign, all four you albums. You sign one of them, too. If, I'll you si- if you want them to sign, I'll sign them. I'll take the plastic off and sign them, or I'll send it to you brand new. What I want. I Again, I keep talking about the book, uh, The Chain Gang All-Stars. Chain Gang All-Stars is my favorite book of the year. Although, uh, Paul Murray, The Beasting, is, is, is right there with it. But I keep saying, suck my dick, America. It's a line from the book. I love it. Liz has gotten really into Taylor Swift. She's all about those bracelets, the friendship bracelets. And I keep trying, saying, Liz, make me a bracelet that says, suck my dick, America. <laughs> and I will wear it on tour. I want our listeners to send in to All Things Comedy a bracelet that says, suck my dick, America. Uh, it's got to have a comma. Suck my dick, comma, America. You can put an exclamation point. You can all leave it caps out. caps or? Whatever no. you want. Oh, it's got, it's got to have that comma between suck dick and America. You can do whatever else you want with that. And the top five, the best five of these, <laughs> I will wear them on tour and I will give you, uh, I will give you the album bundle. I'll give five, I'll give up five album bundles. There, maybe there's more than, I assume we're going to get more than five. Some are going to be bad. I'm only going to take the best ones and you get the bundle. And if you want to send it, put in something in the box for Greg, it has to be not as nice as what you give me. I don't care what it is. It just has to be not as nice. Yeah, I definitely don't want that. If you give me something gold, Greg's has to be silver or worse. If you give me a bracelet, you want to give Greg a ring, that's okay. It just has to be poor quality. You have until the end of the year. And then I will, I will decide. I will gather. I will judge the bracelets. Mm. And then I will give out the awards. Maybe like a, a bracelet for me from a famous quote for, oh, wait, no, this is a Taylor Swift thing. It doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Suck my dick, America. You could get that as a tattoo. I thought about it, but it's still too much for a tattoo. A it's, bracelet's okay. I agree. A, t- a tattoo is too much, but I did consider it heavily. I'll get into more of that. Uh, wait, can you buy those so. on your website or? You will be able to. Again, they're, they're getting released in a week or two. Uh, I, just, I just know they're, they're uh, available soon. It's December something. But you can get them for free if you make me a bracelet that says suck my dick America. It doesn't have to be the Taylor Swift style. You, just, they, you know, they have the little letter things. I want it. I want it. And Liz has been slow. <laughs> Too slow. Liz is not getting any vinyl. I'll tell you that right now. And now, wait, and that was, did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Notes, notes, notes. Did we get any notes? Notes, notes, notes. Did we get any notes? You know, I actually did get another note. Uh, you know, I'll tell you about this next time. I'll do it next week. Fuck y'all. Now it's time to take it down to a place that's always fighting, that's always ornery, that's always dangerously close to not yes ending. Their insanity. <laughs> it's email corner. Email corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. 
Guys, emails, they're a thing. Aaron, am I wrong? No, you're 100% right. Thank you for yes-anding my insanity. Emails are a thing. We get them. We love them. This week, I gave them to Greg to look through, and he could pick three. Next week, same deal. Greg, what are emails this week? Okay. Uh, again, JRVP, Junior Vice President at gmail.com. I was going to mention that. You should email us, because I feel like, uh, I don't know if they were running out or what. Uh, but they weren't amazing. JRVP, Junior Vice President at gmail.com. Also, go ahead. Yeah, you can review us on iTunes. Check us out on YouTube, too. You can see my unwashed hair. Uh, from Braxton. Anthony, if you could choose a top three comic book movies for Greg to watch to sway him, what would they be? I uh, have said on this podcast, I've never watched a comic book movie. And people are always telling me, oh, if you watch this one, you'll like comic book movies. And... I'll like give it a half a try and it never really lands. Uh, Braxton's choices in in uh, no order would be Dark Knight, Avengers Endgame, or Logan. Uh, your name is first in the title, so you can force him to do this. Have you never seen any of those three movies? Do you never see Dark Knight? I watched Heath Ledger. I watched um, a lot of Avengers Endgame, but without the volume on someone else's screen on the on an airplane once. But you never saw Dark it. Knight? No. The Heath Ledger Joker you never saw? No. Okay, that's great. Wow. That's a great one, but I wouldn't put it on my list of three. I, I was going to try to com trying to convince someone to to get into superhero movies. I'll give you I'll give you my top three. And Aaron, I'd love your opinion because I know you've probably seen yeah. way more superhero movies than Greg. I'm going to say Logan. I think Logan is hmm. is fucking awesome. It's R rated. It's like it's sad. It's it's a great movie. It's great, but I feel like you have to have seen some of the earlier stuff. It helps, to, to but it. it is still an adult superhero movie yeah. when there are very few of those. So I'm putting Logan on the list. I'm going to go uh this is a gimme. This is a gimme for me is um uh Captain America Winter Soldier. Yep. Is I think really? it, it, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It you, you don't need to know much. And it's like a true spy thriller. It's fucking awesome. It's an adult movie that rules. And I would put uh, my third one, and I'm going to say that as like an oddball, people who don't like superhero movies can, will enjoy this, is Thor Ragnarok. Aaron, what do you think of those? Uh, I mean, Winter Soldier, you do need to know a little bit of the first movie. Sure. And I'm not talking about, this isn't about mm -hmm. so much like what you need to know. It's about like, can you enjoy the movie? As an adult and not like, you know, a little kid who's all fanning out about fucking. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I would hope with the Winter Soldier. I mean, it is, it is one of my favorites of, of all of Marvel. Well, the reason I chose this was I thought, okay, um, you know, I've been watching just stuff to uh, unwind a little more lately. Mm -hmm. Saw that, you know, I just, I just ran through the ultimatum. Ooh, I should have saved that for Recommendation Station. Uh, ultimatum Queer Love. You know, if I'm going to be spending 10 hours on that... Maybe it's time to just because of this question, because of this show, I can bring it back and tell you what I what I thought afterwards. I'll actually follow through with this advice. You should. You should. I mean, but I, but I but now let's hear. Uh, yeah, let's, let's hear. Let's hear you. Aaron, well, would now I, I don't know what to do because if who's top three do I choose? Mine. What What are your three, Aaron? I would definitely go Iron Man. Hmm. First Iron Man. That was like the first one that really uh, yeah. Um, yeah, made things popular. That's, uh, that's I can't argue with that. Robert Downey Jr. is great. Um, I thought about the first Avengers. I figured Dark Knight. I mean, I do feel like Dark Knight would be uh, would it's be great. one to do. It's great. But who would I knock out of your three then? I w I wouldn't argue. I, if you wanted to put the Dark Knight in, I would. You could take put take out any of those three. Okay. Maybe take out Logan. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Any of those four <laughs> are going to do. It. Aaron, do you have a problem with any of my? Uh, would you? Uh, what would your three be? Iron Man and what? What are the two? Iron Man. Um. I would have the Winter Soldier on there as well, and I would say Guardians. Guardians one. Okay, yeah, can't argue with that either. That's kind of like a Thor Ragnarok type deal. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Check out, okay. go check out okay. Winter Soldier okay. and come back to us. Okay, the less silly outfits, the better. I feel like helps me. Uh, or just watch the entire take, series of Peacemaker. Takes me out. No, what is that? I don't know. What it's that great. Is. Uh, Kim, not. Uh, not anyone we know named Kim, but a new Kim. I wanted to hear your guys' take on the new Matt Reif special. Have y'all got a chance to watch it? I saw it, thought it was pretty mediocre. 
uh, jokes weren't hitting like his crowd work videos on IG. I was not personally aware with Matt Rife about Matt Rife until there was a little bit of uh, attention on this special. I figured you might have a take. I keep, Aaron, have you seen Matt Rife's special? No, I, I barely. I keep getting Google alerts because they're writing articles about whether or not you can be a good looking comedian or not. And it's all because of Matt Rife, but they mentioned me. And I always like that. I mean, that's I would, pretty cool. I, yeah, I always enjoy getting a shout out for being good looking. And people who are mad at Matt Rife, <laughs> they're like, oh, he's just like, he just goes to the gym. Hey, get your fat ass to the gym then, if that's what you're mad about. It's fine that Matt Rife works out a lot. If you got it, flaunt it. I got no problem with that. I've been on record. I, I'm happy for Matt Rife and his career. I am surprised by the special. And I maybe saw five minutes of it. It's not my thing. It's not for me. His audience was like, you know, young girls and middle-aged girls and older girls. And uh, but what, what's fascinating to me is in this special, he's like, no, I'm for guys now. This special is for guys. And it's clearly like he's, I've never seen someone so try to or piss off their, their existing audience to try to grasp at what he thinks should be a comedian's audience. What he thinks should be cool. He should just, I, and my advice to him was just be happy that you have an audience at all yeah. and be, be grateful for it. And, and you can play to that or play against it if you want. But he's so trying to like, no, I'm for guys now. I'm a real comic for dudes. It gives me a little bit of a feeling of Iggy Azalea trying to freestyle. You know what I mean? Gross. That it's like, hey, you could have just been a pop star, but you decided you were like hardcore. And Ooh. I don't understand the defensiveness of like a 15 minutes of it. It's like him responding to his haters. Why are you mad at all? You made so much fucking money. Yeah. You should be so happy. And I think a part of the reason the special is getting uh, trashed more than, uh, you know, others would is a little bit of a sophomore slump thing is that he put out a special before he blew up on YouTube. And that was like his best stuff that he'd been working on for years. And then he did some crowd work stuff that it's like in the moment he's good with that. And then this is like he's only had a little bit of time to develop this material and he's putting it out. I think it was probably too soon. And I'm surprised that he tried to be so aggressive and upset his current fan base to try to get people who he is not going to get. Yeah. The Shane Gillis fans of the world are not going to be like, oh, a domestic violence joke, this guy's for me too. That it surprises me. Uh, no shade, um, do your thing. He's still insanely successful, but I'm just surprised at the anger, or that there's any anger at all. But the domestic violence joke, which is admittedly the only joke I've ever heard from Matt Reif, because I just saw the clip of it, it's like two minutes long, the, the bit. Uh, you know, it wasn't funny, though. It wasn't, like, well done or clever or anything about it. It wasn't, like, extremely offensive or anything, but it no. didn't seem funny to the point that I would be like, oh, this is a good comedian. It, listen, it's not a bad joke. It's just su it's surprising coming from... It's not even that surprising coming from him. I guess it's the fact that he opened with it, or maybe he's promoting it with that joke to try to get, like, the, the guys who aren't into comedy unless there's a woman getting beaten up. It's just surprising. I mean, it to is me. kind of a bad joke. It's like the cooking, you know, if she could cook. It's not, it's not a great joke. I mean, that's kind of like a 1930s joke, isn't it? Yeah. The cook, black eye. The sure. Joke. But it's not, but it's not like, it's not terrible. I've heard worse jokes. Um, but I, I think that what happens with people sometimes when they have a, a, a crew with them, a comedian with a crew, you know, I'm a guy, you, I'm alone. I'm by myself. Oh, cool. uh, a lot of people uh, are with the crew. It's called the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. When I'm doing stand-up. JRVP. You don't come Junior with... Junior Vice President. You don't come on the road with me. The You're Jessel not like Nick hanging out. The Jesselnick and Rosenthal out. Vanity Project. You're not hanging JRVP. out. JRVP. Junior Vice President. It's just me <laughs> doing my thing. And that when you are a big comic with a crew, you've got a bunch of yes-men around you. And your act ends up being things that you said backstage... And everyone laughed at. And they have to laugh because you're the man. And you're like, that's great. That's going in the act. I'm unbeatable. Mm. And then your act gets bad. Mm. You can see them. That's why you don't take Aaron on the road to dangerously uh, yes and you. Everything yeah. you've said during this podcast has been bad, Greg. This is the Matt Rife opening joke of podcast <laughs> from Greg's side. Luckily, I'm here to hit the ball back and keep it in play. Can I just say something to comedians I, I would and love com comedy fans? I would love it. There is... I don't know where, I mean, I know when it happened with Louie, where he started turning out specials every year. And they say that Carlin did that. Carlin did not do that. Carlin was every two years. He would hone that act for two years. And now everyone's rushing material out. And it's just like, A, as a fan, you got to understand that because of the pace, it's not going to be as good. And B, as a comic, just, just take your time. 
I'll tell you why, Aaron. That's a great question. Great observation. It's because the market opened up and people will pay a lot of money to yeah. have it, especially if you're one of the big people. Yeah. They'll, get, they'll get, do a new one every year. And people, the, the audience doesn't understand any of what you just said. Because it, it'll be, I'll put a special out that I've worked on for five years. And every comment is, that was great. When's the next one? Yeah. That's, that's all they want is the next one right away. And they'll watch it and fans will be like, oh, it was great. Non-fans will be like, no, it was bad. They'll find reasons. But people, it's just, it's a content uh, in the form of becoming special. I'm, I'm against it completely. Matt Reif, I understand why he would do it because it's like the next step up from YouTube. Yeah. You go to Netflix. Sure. He's trying to conquer the world. I don't know why he's not happy conquering the, the many, the hemisphere yeah. that he's conquered. Just enjoy it. And that's why. You didn't uh, respect the integrity of the show, though. If you say the Jess Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. You got to whisper it. You made the rule. Yeah, but that, not while you're interrupting me while I'm talking about something. When you ask a question that only I can answer, you have no input in, and then you just start fucking talking <laughs> and saying Jess Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Over and over again. What's our last question? Emails are a thing. Uh, it's a long one. Greg and Anthony, about two years ago, I changed up my career entirely, went from bartending to custom home building. It's just me apprenticing for an experienced home builder. We usually work alone. Recently, we've been working on a big job with some guys uh, from other companies. One of them is the most annoying person I've ever met. He's constantly burping and farting, even more so when you're in a confined space with him. He smells like he's never showered in his life. He brings a Bluetooth radio, plays the worst music I've ever heard at intolerable levels. And this this next sentence is why I, I chose this email. And he screams in a Chinese accent, all day over his music he's a white dude so this adds an extra layer uh when they're not doing this uh they spend the rest of the day whistling noises mimicking a vehicle backing up i know uh typically i just ask this person to dial it down but this person's main aim is to annoy and irritate so i think acknowledging it will only let them know uh they're getting under my skin and do it more they're almost 40 there's no way Excuse me. They don't realize that they're making everyone's day worse. What do I do? How do I handle it? Okay. Uh, first of all, let me just say this person sounds like they're mentally ill. <laughs> like they are developmentally disabled in some way. Yeah. Touch of the tism. Yeah. The, the tism or something worse. I mean, I think when you're working in it with houses and building things, you're going to run into people like this. Um, again, I agree with you that if you uh, say anything, it's going to make him feel satisfaction. I think his life is probably truly terrible. And this is his like form of bullying to try to like get back is just like mm. annoy people at work that there's nothing you can really say. I would recommend doing one of two things. One would be a very public prank that gets everyone to laugh at him. And then in a way that he's either got to laugh at himself or it like ruins his life. You know, that way it's just like, okay, I've been annoying. They got me. I'm talking about like something stupid, like a glitter bomb in his lunchbox. You know, or like something that's just like, he's going to open up his lunchbox, a big thing blows up, everyone laughs at him, and he's like, ah, I got glitter on me for a day, whatever. You feel better. He, maybe he tones it down. Or, the only way you can make yourself feel better, and I've, I've given this some thought before this episode when I saw the question. I'm against doing this in general, but in this situation, if I were you, I would probably... Nail gun this guy? Fuck with his food. Oh. I would probably try to put something in his sandwich that would hurt him. Or make him sick in some way. Or piss in his thermos. Damn. I think this is, these are horrible things to do, unforgivable. In this situation, I would consider doing those things. And I probably would he, wouldn't so have he, mess he, with Would he know, food. though? Would he know? No. He, would be, he might spit out his water and be like, well, this is piss. It's not going to stop I'm not drinking him doing anymore. it, though. No, but he'll know someone's after him. And that will make him think before he just goes and, and is annoying. Is, is, is do something to his food. Hmm. What do you think, Greg? Well, this, it was a tough one for me because I kind of, I'm usually this guy. Like I love, um, whistling to mimic a vehicle backing up who doesn't No, do, do it right now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I don't know why I can't do it right now. My voice is so, so, uh, dry. But who doesn't love... Um, Check out fucking Otis Redding over here. <laughs> Usually I'm a pretty good whistler. Uh, who doesn't love mimicking your favorite songs in a Chinese accent? I, that, that would be enough. The, the Chinese accent thing would be... Like, maybe to pull his boss aside and be like, what's up with this fucking guy? Get that, this guy's fucking making me crazy? Talk, talk to his boss or fuck with his food. 
And that was, did we get any notes? Nope. And that was, <laughs> email corner, shine on. You crazy truck backing up. And that, and, and, and that was, and that was, and, 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 and that was, and that email corner, diamonds around the world unite. Diamonds around the world unite. And now it's time for, ad copy. I am so excited uh, to do this ad. Because when since we last taped, we have both received our Tacovas in the mail. Cowboy boots are the Christmas gift, holiday gift of 2023. I got the Nolans. I went mm. black Nolans. They look sharp. They're so comfortable. I love them. Uh, great pair of Western boots. You can wear them with a casual look. Kind of makes it a little elevated, a little cooler. Uh, they're handcrafted. From premium bovine and exotic hides, they, they stand the test of time. I didn't get mine because I wanted to give Emika the option. If she wanted the Tacovas, she could get them, and she loves them. Uh, they look great on her. It just makes her look cool on a night out. A- any any scenario. I love I love my Tacovas. I've got many different pairs of cowboy boots. Tacovas are my new favorites. They're my they're my go tos. They're easy to put on. They're so comfortable. They fit like custom boots, and I have custom boots, so I know. Check out uh, Tacovas.com. Look through the site. They're so reasonably priced. Even the even the exotic uh, leathers, even the uh, the gator, they're, it, they're beautiful boots. Check them out. I uh, I think they just look beautiful. If you're stumped for a, a gift in the holiday season, you can get a gift card at Tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S dot com. If you don't want to. You know, pick it out if you don't know the the size or whatever it is. Uh, you can get your gift custom leather stamped or branded. Uh, and if there's a Tacova store in your neck of the woods, you can actually swing by there. You can get a boot shine. You can get a beer. You can get uh, gift wrapping supplies all on the house. Uh, so you can either get it online uh, through us or go to the store. Tacovas will go the extra mile to make holiday gifting a smooth ride. And yeah, Emika is picky. And she got these and she just thought they were beautiful. They, they fit well. They look great. Uh, love them. Start off the gifting season on the right foot at Tacovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. Don't go gently, y'all. Once you have uh, those Tacovas on before you go out, have a little AG1. AG1. You don't have to drink it in the morning. I do. I usually do. First thing, empty stomach in the morning. That's what that's what Emika does too. And uh, since he started drinking AG1, you know, feels more energetic. My, my parents, they're in on the AG1. Uh, I realize though, like when I come home from my day at work or when uh, I come home from the gym, I, I like it then. That's what I'm feeling really thirsty. I'll tell you what I, why I know it works is because I, listen, I've been AG1 for years now. At least two years uh, on the road all the time. I got the travel packets. Liz dips in. Liz comes in. She's like, oh, I want some AG1. I'm not feeling well. Give me some AG1. She feels better. I, I say do it every day so you don't, get, you don't end up getting sick. You never feel better. You always feel good <laughs> with AG1 every morning. Aaron, do you do AG1? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And look at Aaron. Look, if you saw me and Aaron coming down the street, you would cross the street and then cross back and try to walk behind us so you can see what we look like from the back. You know what I'm saying, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Great butts, both of us. <laughs> AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. That's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, starts with AG1. Try AG1. Get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That is drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. And that was... Ad copy. Let's fly through headlines. <laughs> let's get the headlines. Let's, let's, let's get the headlines. Let's get the headlines. headlines. Love that song. So many headlines this week. Uh, starting with my favorite one. The first rule of Kids Fight Club at Kids Unlimited in Prosperity, South Carolina is that kids slap the shit out of each other, and it helps you get through the day. Uh, Unfortunately, that's illegal. And the Newberry County Sheriff's Office uh, last week announced the arrest of two women who face multiple charges of contributing to the delinquency of a minor and unlawful conduct towards children by encouraging the kids they were in charge of to slap and fight. Unsurprisingly, 
I love this. <laughs> I feel like every daycare should have a fight club. If you want to be the kind of parent who just drops your kid off somewhere, you better be preparing that kid for a life on their own. A life where they, all they want to do is blow up credit card companies. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. They want their imaginary friends to go to the next level. They want to fuck Helena Bonacardum <laughs> in different ways. Helena Bonham Carter? Yeah. Bottom Carter? Helena Bonham Carter. Helena Bonham Carter. Bonham Carter. <laughs> Helena, Helena Bonham Carter. Carter. Helena, Helena Bonham, Bonham Carter. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, these kids need to learn that life is about fight club. <laughs> I think it's so funny that these women would think they could get away with this. Would, I mean, listen, kids come home with bruises and scrapes and shit. But if you're having kids fight each other and you're picking out ones to like match them up against each other and betting on it, which I assume they're doing, if they weren't, if they're just doing it for them to slap each other and that's it, wasted opportunity. You got to bet on that. You got to fan duel. You got to draft kings <laughs> with these kids. And to think the kids would go home and there would be no consequences. That the losers would not go home and say, hey, I got beat up today by a kid who looks just like me. I love it. The, do you know the ages? Because, yeah, this was a, a daycare. Kids Unlimited, by the way, is a pretty uh, popular, apparently, daycare like with multiple locations throughout South Carolina. Maybe Pound South for pound, General. the best daycare in South Carolina. Some of the funniest quotes in this article were about all the parents that just thought, oh, these two women are just a couple bad eggs. We're not, we're not giving up on Kids Unlimited. Uh, we love Kids Unlimited. Uh, but these, these two women, they were, they were fired pretty quickly. The, uh, the video showed proof of what was happening. The children were told by the two women, one was in her 20s, one was in her 50s, uh, to slap, push, shove, and hit other children, uh, get in a fight. I think it was like a means of punishment or they were trying to like get them to follow rules. Who knows? Or it was just for fun. But it was just like, we want you guys to fight it out. Uh, there were 14 different victims, all between the ages of three and four. Three of course. Four that's what, that's what I assumed. Six, three, four. And listen, you don't, need a, you don't need a reason to have kids going around slapping each other and pushing each other and getting into fights. When you're three or four, you got that energy. You got to use that energy against each other. Otherwise, kids get too powerful. I, I don't wonder what happens to these women. I like that parents do not care. When COVID hit and they were like, the kids have to stay home, they were like, no, they do not. <laughs> right. Let my kids die. <laughs> yeah, the parents are just like, uh, it's fine. They're, 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 uh, they're bad. Uh, the, some of the women, or one of the women, uh, apparently was recording some of it on her phone. I think she liked it. You know, She liked watching it later, and so they had that as evidence. They have the cameras inside the daycare. So I, I don't think they're, they're getting off, but I'd say it was worth it. it was, I mean, how much damage can a three-year-old do to another three-year-old? Not much. What, what do you mean? I mean, they're, they're pretty hard. It's course. a little slap. Unless you pick up a three-year-old by the ankles and swing them around. No, now they, you're talking. It was just three, three-year-old versus three-year-old. They went, the, the parents weren't getting, they weren't getting involved. They were saying that it was like equivalent, the, the police said, to a sporting event where they were trying to motivate the kids uh, into fighting with each other. At, <laughs> okay, Let, here's my pitch. What would you rather watch? All right. A fight club between three and four-year-olds. Yeah. Or a pillow fight between two 45-year-old men where the kids are in the pillow sack. <laughs> um, the kids. The, the kids going after Listen, if we ever... Aaron, I want you... When, tomorrow, when Bill Burr comes in for, the hour, for his office hours, I want you to ask him if we could film an intro for the show where Greg and I put two three-year-olds into pillowcases and then swing them at each other as hard as we can and they hit in the middle and then we CGI out the blood and stuff and we d it just like JRVP flies out of the screen I think we'd be the most popular podcast of all time the hard part is finding the kids yeah. <laughs> uh, while we were gone Anthony our boss Billy Burr Got some national attention when his wife, uh, Nina Renee Hill, flipped our old uh, president, Donald Trump, with a double bird. They were, at, they were at the UFC fight, I believe. 
uh, and uh, people people went crazy. Yeah, this was in New York, I believe. I think Bill Burr was doing uh, Madison Square Garden the day after I did Carnegie Hall and went to the fight the night before. I had great seats. Uh, and then I saw I see Bill Burr trending on Twitter. I'm like looking at the social media and I'm like, oh, what, I wonder what's going on. I click and I see this thing and it's like, it's MAGA people. Uh, and again, when I say MAGA people, if you voted for Donald Trump, you voted for Donald Trump, whatever. If you're wearing the fucking hat, and it's your whole personality. You're a MAGA person, and it's weird. Uh, MAGA people being like, "This is what happens." You can, and they're not. They're not anti Burr. They're like, "This is why you don't marry a woman like that." Like, and it's it's all trying to say like Bill Burr made a mistake, or he's not happy with his wife in some way. And I laughed knowing that Bill Burr could not give a flying fuck about this. <laughs> in no way was even annoyed that he had to deal with it. it. Was just like, "This is so fucking stupid." Donald Trump gets flicked off all the time, everywhere he goes, no matter what. If you hadn't seen Bill Burr sitting next to his wife. You would not have known who she was. You would not have cared. For certain reason, you think you can talk to Bill because you like his comedy and he'll listen to you. He will not. He does not care. I'm team Bill Burr on this one. I'm team Bill Burr's wife. What uh, about you, Greg? I'm always team Bill Burr's wife and t- Bill Burr. He was on the Rich Eisen show, coworker of mine. He's mm-hmm. been on that mm-hmm. show before, I believe, or his, po- his old podcast. Uh, yeah, and he said, uh, these, those Trump guys, they're always going, ah, you snowflakes, F your feelings and all that. And then you make fun of Trump, and they're like, oh, my God, it's so disrespectful. You're saying F Joe Biden. You can't have it both ways. Freedom yeah. goes both ways. What is that from, by the way? Eliza Schlesinger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he said... Uh, you know, he loves his wife. You know where, where he stands with her. The guy walked in the arena. Everyone cheered. She gave him the finger. Uh, that's why this country's great. You know, be adults about it and give people the finger when you don't like them. Who cares about giving the, 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 the former president the finger? Give everyone the finger. It's not a thing. It's not an email. It's no big deal. The Secret Service does not get involved when you flick off the president behind, to his back. Former, while he's at a UFC fight. Former, former president. Yeah, it, it's, not, it, it's not a big deal. The middle finger was ruined by Dane Cook, and now it's not a thing. It's not an email. I didn't know. Yeah, he ruined it. I didn't even know he was involved with the middle finger. Super finger. Super lame. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. He would do a thing. He would be like, it was like this, or maybe it was this. It was like, he would put like two fingers, and it was like that way you you extra flick someone off. But what you're doing is not flicking someone off. People would get this tattooed on their body. And none of them regret it. (laughs) They're all psyched. There's a new show. Aaron Plant song again. On Netflix, I believe. It's a good one. Yeah, it's on, it is on that, Netflix. If you loop that, Aaron, uh-huh. yeah. we could have a fucking party in here. Oh, I can loop it. <laughs> I like that Aaron spent, spent the month off uh, practicing his jams, mm-hmm. you know, so he could play for us live. Uh, that The new show, Squid Game, The Challenge, you heard of this? I have. Have you watched it? No. Is it I, out? I think it's out. It might just be just about to come out or maybe it might it's, be out. It's out, yeah. I okay. don't care. When, when Netflix does these shows where they don't release everything all at once, because I watched, there was a show, called, I forget what it was called. It was, it was a Korean show where like the best athletes in Korea all competed head to head. It was awesome for a little bit. And then it got real boring and then I didn't give a shit. But they did a thing where it was like, you can watch two episodes a week until it's over. I don't like that. Give it all at once or don't give it at all. And this I, the, uh, Squid Game, the challenge, I, I'm cautiously optimistic for season two of Squid Game, but I don't need to see this dumb shit. Yeah, this seems... Uh completely beside the point not that i watched squid game but uh it's where 456 contestants compete for a cash prize of 4.65 million and that's the biggest ever in reality tv and the contestants or a few of them at least are threatening to sue claiming that they suffered hypothermia and nerve damage while filming according to the report yeah i right away when they started filming this people were upset people who were contestants were saying it's so obvious that we never had a chance to win this game that the cameras are following like these like let's say there's 100 people the cameras are following 20 of them and they're like wait a second i'm freezing here like everybody else but no one's looking at me there's no way i'm going to be anything on this that it was the people who were like influencers already had some fame they got more attention so i I do believe it's rigged if only there was a tv show they could reference to know that if you sign up for a reality show (laughs) 
you can't sue anyone for anything ever again. Yeah. You are so dumb. I'm sure you've signed it all away. Yeah. Like, get mad that you signed up for the show. I've, I've taken jobs where I show up and I'm like, I should not have taken this job. I'm going to hate this so much. But you get through it. Uh, this is what you did. You're on Squid Game The Challenge and you didn't have a good time. What about the original show made you think it would be fun? Yeah. Even if you win the Squid Game, you're mad. You're like, this probably wasn't worth it. I'm going to use this money to try to forget about Squid Game. Aaron, do you remember growing up playing Squid Game? No. It wasn't fun. <laughs> Everyone hated it. I mean, wasn't the, you know, part of the Squid Game is the, uh, you know, commentary on capitalism and how it, you know, ultimately squeezes you into a pulp and mm -hmm. takes advantage of you and only no. one person's going to get it? There's no metaphor. It's about the game you played when you were kids. <laughs> it's about Squid Game. Uh, the show was filmed at Cardington Studios, a former Royal Air Force Base in uh, England. Temperatures dropped to about 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, causing some contestants to collapse after playing the game for six hours. I guess there was a game where you, you had to just like play red light, green light, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, one contestant told the outlet, imagine you're playing that for six hours. What game is that? This isn't a game. The fun is now gone. You can't tell people they have to stand in below freezing temperatures in just a tracksuit and two socks. Come on. W what did you expect? That's what Squid Game is. Those are the rules. It's like you stand there for a long time and it sucks. Nothing about Squid Game is fun. Yeah. On the TV show, they're shot. They're shot and killed. Yeah. They fall through glass all the time. They get stabbed. Yep. They get shot. Yeah. It's that, a bad time, man. Yeah. They, if, they, they, they also complain you, about 3.30 a.m. wake-up calls. That was... The whole point of Squid Game is you shouldn't do Squid Game. Yeah. When someone offers you, hey, you want to do a Squid Game, you know what you say, Aaron? No, sir. That's right. Mm. That's the one time I'll let you not yes and my insane bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, what do you tell your kids about Squid Game? Don't play it. Don't play it. If you're in the subway and someone slaps you, what do you do? Don't don't slap them back. You don't you don't play Squid Game. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Right? Yeah. Kids, That's how the our listeners, our listeners are, I think, between the ages of three and seventeen, for the most part. Kids, <laughs> don't do Squid Game. You're gonna you're gonna get cold. But it's gonna, it's gonna get so cold. If you if you do sign up for it. Mm -hmm. If you make a commitment to something, follow through. You have to just follow, like a podcast, like a podcast you don't want to do when you're very tired from coming off the road. You still show up and you do it, mm -hmm. even if it's cold. If I could give you the money, we did two ads today. If I could give you that to not be here, I would have done that. But the ads won't pay us if I'm not here, physically and mentally. But I'll tell you what, if I was on Squid Game right now and I'm cold and I'm doing red light, green light, you know what I do? Green light. I get out. You get out. Yeah. I get out. I, 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 I move during red light and then I get to go sit in the, warm, in the warmth <laughs> and talk to Helena Bonham Carter, who I assume is going to win Squid Game the Challenge. For sure. She's the best one. <laughs> I just got like an image of Helena Bottom Carter in, in some Tacovas. She'd look good. Really? Know. Oh, she would. Yeah. With the AG1 poured all over herself. <laughs> well, who do you think would be most likely to do a squid game? We're all in the subway. We've had a night. We're walking back. We get offered a squid game. Aaron, I think you might take the squid game. Uh, no. No, I wouldn't take the squid game. You're on your way home to your wife and kid, and you get offered a squid game. You're not taking a squid game? I mean, I'd have to be in real dire straits. I'd have really had to overextend it financially somehow. Mm. Maybe, who knows? Maybe all things comedy can't resign the Jessel Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. Chair VP. Junior Vice President. Time, times are tough yeah. at ATC. Then you right. got to do a squid game. You got to do a squid game then, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now we know what your breaking point is. Uh, last headline is uh, about a man who was hospitalized by debilitating Crohn's disease. You know Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Uh, who found relief after putting his mom's poop in his rectum. Uh, this is called a poop transplant. 
uh, but was then surprised when that DIY treatment caused him to experience some of her menopause symptoms. I, how did the, would the guy know what menopause symptoms are? How would you, you just, you'd be like, I'm feeling weird. You well, would never be like, hey, I'm having hot flashes. You wouldn't know what those are. What you do haven't you mean? seen Mrs. Doubtfire yet. I think that poop transplants with your mom are, uh, it's more than a bonding exercise. And listen, I know that poop transplants, usually it's like they put it in a pill, you eat the pill, it opens in your stomach, the good bacteria gets in there. That's there there's an actually it. like, yeah, health healthy way that's approved to try to do something like this. Yes. Or you can do what these guys did and you go butt to butt with your mom. <laughs> you go butt to butt with your mom and and then you just you just kind of try to try to intake. You know what I mean? Aaron, you know what I mean, don't you? I, I know what you mean. You try to grip it. You yeah. try to like Hey, you gotta grip that. Suction yeah, cup. grip it. Yeah, you gotta grip gri it. You gotta grip it. Grip it. Your mom's pushing. You're pulling, <laughs> and then and then your Crohn's goes away. A tug of war. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for people who have Crohn's disease but no mom. Then what do you do? Then who are you going butt to butt <laughs> with? You're just standing there with your butt out, hoping for God to take away your Crohn's disease. He said, you know, initially his name was Charlie Curtis. He'd feel the tingling inside of him. He said it felt healthy. It felt uh, like it was working. And then eventually he just started experiencing some unexpected side effects, sweating, hot flashes, and mood swings, similar to what his menopausal mom was experiencing. And doctors did say, you know, the donated poop does transmit high levels of hormones. So so it's possible. Not, it's not proven, but it's, it's possible. If I had a butt full of my mom's poop and I started to sweat a little bit, you know, I wouldn't find out what the source is. I'd be like, what's going on, mom? I feel like these symptoms are literally just symptoms of an infection. It's symptoms of <laughs> someone else's poop is in your butt. Or maybe it's just like a little warm in the house that day. Like the sun's coming in. Yeah, but if you want, if you're going butt to butt and the temperature's below 60 degrees, you're not getting anything out of there. You gotta be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be like a jungle in there. <laughs> Usually you're you're taking the poop from a donor, you're blending it with saline solution. Of butt course. to butt is a totally different Butt scenario. to butt's way different. And then what do you when the poop's in your butt, what do you do? You just hold it in as long as you can? It's I think it's just there. It's inserted. It's, you got a butt they, swallow. They said at first they did it every day for a month mm -hmm. and then every two days for a month and then three days for a month and then eventually they get it back down. But that was the process of it. Um, but it's a lot of fun too, and it's a way to connect with your mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> you know that card's going to be disgusting. <laughs> and now it's time for <laughs> Choo -choo. recommendation station. I got I got three this week. I got big ones this week. So Greg, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Listen, I got three books. I recommend a lot of novels on the show, occasionally nonfiction. I've got uh, three nonfiction books here that are all coming out. Uh, one just came out a week or two ago. Uh, the other ones are all coming out in the next week. Uh, the uh, Two of them are about stand-up comedy and comedy in general. If you, if you follow me, if you like my takes on comedy, if you're interested in uh, stand-up as an art form, then you've got to read the first book of my recommendation. It's called Comedy Book. How Comedy Conquered Culture and the Magic That Makes It Work by Jesse David Fox. Jesse David Fox is a writer uh, for New York Magazine, I believe Vulture. He does interviews. He interviewed me. I'm in the book, uh, which was cool. But it, like he, uh, every, his take on Louis C.K., his take on everything in modern stand-up, I believe is correct, well thought out, and informative. If you ever want to, if you ever find yourself getting into arguments with friends about stand-up comedy or comedy in general, where it's moving, where it's coming from, you got to read comedy book, How Comedy Conquered Culture and the Magic That Makes It Work by Jesse David Fox. It's great. Liz is reading it right now. It's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, the second one is kind of similar. Uh, it's called Outrageous, A History of Showbiz and the Culture Wars by Cliff Nesteroff. Cliff, Cliff Nesteroff w wrote what I previously believed was the best book on stand-up comedy ever written called The Comedians. Uh, that was Cliff Nesteroff, K-L-I-P-H, Nesteroff. And this is called Outrageous. It's about how people are always saying now, oh, you can't joke about anything anymore. You used to be able to joke about whatever, now right. you can't. Yeah. He goes back to the history of entertainment, and people have always been saying this. Yeah. Bob Hope was complaining about you couldn't say anything anymore. People have always been doing it, that it's nothing new. People haven't changed. They're just always trying to find some victim, and it's, it's a fascinating book. 
Hmm. Uh, again, that's Outrageous, A History of Showbiz and the Culture Wars by Cliff Nesteroff. My third book, again, comes out this week. I, I have a blurb in the book. I read this book a few months ago. It's called Trash Talk, The Only Book About Destroying Your Rivals That Isn't Total Garbage by Rafi Kohan, K-O-H-A-N, R-A-F-I, K-O-H-A-N. It's a book that like studies talking shit. In a way, like sometimes mm. someone's talking trash and you're like, oh, this person's scared. And sometimes they're talking shit where you're like, oh, they're getting in my head. They're going to destroy me. And this book teaches you the difference between the two. Like it really is fascinating. Like who's talking, what makes talking shit effective? What makes it bad? What makes it lame? It is so much better than when, when I, I was like, I'll read this book. It's great. It's great. Again, that is Trash Talk by Rafi Kohan. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, all three great books, all about comedy, all about talking shit, and you will enjoy. Greg, what do you got? I like talking shit. I want to read it. I'll, I'll bring a copy think, next you week. You think I'm good at, good at talking shit? Yeah, you can be. Not as good as me. Um, I'm going to recommend a book. Uh, we both got this, I believe. Uh, the Vulnerables by Sigrid Nunez. Uh, it's a book, one of my favorite authors, maybe my favorite author. Uh, it's kind of a pandemic book about an experience of, of the narrator and uh, a young man uh, being in this apartment while she's watching a parrot during the pandemic. And it goes from there. And uh, it's a light book. It's a quick read. Uh, on the back, the New York Times wrote something that, that hit me of why I like Nunez, which is whenever I open it, this is their quote, whenever I open one of her novels, I always know I'm immediately, this is where I want to be. I just like being inside her head. This is not one of my favorite books of hers. It's not like one of her best, but I still enjoy it because I just always enjoy Sigrid Nunez. But I thought... Uh, if you're hearing this, you know, for the first time or whatever, because I've gone through, I, I went and looked, she's written 10 books. I've been going back and through them. I've now read eight of those 10 books. I've gone through almost all of them. So I'm going to give you a top five Nunez book, just in case you're curious. Number one, what are you going through? Uh, really love that book. Number two, the friend, which won the uh, national book award about, uh, relationship with a dog. Number three, uh, Sempre Susan, which is actually a memoir of Susan Sontag, of all people, but it's more of a memoir of herself and being young and, and young writer, living with an old writer, all this stuff. It's great. For Ruena is number four. Uh, it's kind of like her war novel, but a uh, relationship between her and uh, an army nurse. And then number five, Feather on the Breath of God, which is her first book about uh, her immigrant parents. Uh, Panamanian, dad, Chinese, German, all this mixed up. I love Sigrid Nunes, so any one of those you could check out, but her new book is The Vulnerables. So the new book doesn't crack the top five? It doesn't crack the top five. Okay. I mean, it's stiff, stiff competition. I've read the. Yes. I've read your one and two. Uh, I've not read the rest of her. Actually, I've, I've read this one, The Vulnerables. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's... It's a minor work from a great talent. Yes. And it, it's a quick read, so go. yeah, check it out. Uh, Aaron, you got anything you recommend? Uh, have you guys watched the new season of Fargo? I, I watched the first episode last night. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Cool. I'm, I'll, I look forward to, uh, to the rest of it. Uh, and that is... Choo-choo. Recommendation Station. Walker, get us out of here. Whoa, Nelly, for Todd, too. That's a spicy meatball.